Okay, so I'm stuck without a car because this little sucker decided to fail on me. I don't think it's battery, I think it's my car, so this video is basically going to be about diagnosing short circuits in your car and how to find where they're at. So let's go ahead and get to it. Shouldn't be too hard, hopefully not. It just might be. But I have no idea. Just so you guys know. A dead battery really would be anything under 11 volts that can't crank your car anymore. This battery is horrifyingly at 9 volts. That's really bad. So, let's find out what the hell happened. Before we can diagnose anything, we have to go charge the battery. So, let's go ahead and head over there. Okay, so I've gone ahead and installed the battery on the car. So the first thing we're going to do is make sure that the battery is being charged by the car. So in order to do that, you're going to have to have a multimeter. You can buy these anywhere really. I think uh, the cheapest place is Harbor Freight. These run, this one right here runs about 20 bucks, but you can buy a cheap one for about 2 bucks. They look the same. What you're going to want to do to make sure it's charging is put it on voltage right here and make sure it's set at 20. So, if we test it right here, you should see the battery is charged at roughly 12 volts. You see 12 volts. When you start the car, in order to charge the battery, you should see it go up to about 13 volts. As you can tell, it's at 14 volts. So the battery is being charged by the alternator. Okay, so now that we know that the alternator is charging the battery, what you're gonna wanna do is test which circuit in your car is draining the most current. So in order to do that, what you're gonna wanna do is put your multimeter on the 20 amp mode right here. So then, once you have it set there, you're going to want to pull this red plug out and put it on the yellow one, which is an unfused 20 amp. You want to put on the 20 amp to avoid burning the fuse in case there's more current drawn than you expect, which is likely to happen if you have a short circuit. So, first things we're going to do is find the fuse box. Once you find the fuse box here, you're going to open it, set the cover aside, and you're gonna look at the most common components that are likely to have an issue. The most common problem that I've been able to see are your windows, your radio, your interior light, and certain other things including the horn in case there's a short circuit there. Worst case scenario, you have a headlight or even your battery circuit or something is, is messed up. So what we're gonna do first is check the top one, then the bottom, and then go in order. Okay, so you're going to need your pliers in order to be pulling out the fuses. So we're going to start off with the FI E slash M, which is the engine control. We're going to go ahead and pull the first fuse out. And there shouldn't be any, any current flowing through this one because the engine is completely off. There's no ignition power. So keep your fuse organized. Put it in the first prong and then the second one. And you should see that there's no power being consumed, no electricity is flowing. So that's a good sign. So go ahead and put this fuse back in. And go one by one. Pull the next one out. This next one is the radio fuse. This one should be drawing a small amount, even though the radio's off, but to save the memory. You can tell it's it's pulling 0.14 of, a, of an amp out. So keep that in mind. By the way, when you pull this fuse out, you're gonna have to reset your uh, your presets on the radio. 
because you just erased it totally. And then it works. This next one is the door lock. So this one shouldn't be drawing any current at all. Maybe on your card if they're digital it might draw a few, but this isn't, so this is zero. This next one is the condenser fan. Nothing because the car's off. This one was a cooling fan and as well there's nothing. This next one is a really common failure. It's called the interior light and most of the time there's a short circuit somewhere in there and you can find out really quick with this. All you do is pull the fuse, test it. If your light is off, it shouldn't draw anything. And as you can see, mine is drawing 0.36, which is a lot over time. It adds up. So I have a short circuit on my interior lamp. You would follow the same process for all these fuses that are in your side of your, your vehicle. Fuses only, not relays. This will not work for relays. So once you find your short, you can know around where to look. So I know that my short circuit is gonna be somewhere near my interior light. Okay, so after further investigation, CA, CCA, the AH. So the one I'm interested in right now is the AH. This is a performance battery. It's a 55 amp hour battery. That's what AH stands for. On other cars, or on most cars actually, you're looking at 45 to 50. So let's go ahead and get to the math and find out exactly how much current it takes to drain the battery. So as you guys saw, the battery that I have is a 55 amp hour battery. So the biggest battery drainage that I was seeing was the radio and the light. Between those two, you put them together, you're consuming half of an amp. So in order to find out how long it takes to drain the battery to where you can't use it anymore, you just do some simple math. In this case, you get 55 amps per hour out of the battery. So if we go ahead and divide this with this, which will end up with 55 amp hour divided by 0.51 amps. As you can tell, the A's will cancel and you'll be left with hours. Now, using simple arithmetic, all you gotta do is do your math. Yes, I have a picture of my dog as my wallpaper. Leave me alone, guys. So, that gives you 100 and 7.84 hours sounds like a lot right well I left my car over four days before I realized that I was out of power I didn't crank my car it was so low that it didn't even turn at all imagine doing that with a 45 amp hour battery let's go ahead and do the simple math again you'd be left with 88 hours so if we do divide 88 into days, you three days. You'd have three days before the battery is drained. As you guys remember, my battery was completely gone. So I don't think this is the only thing drawing current. But the biggest one was the light. 
so I'm gonna have to get that replaced quickly all right guys thanks for watching like and subscribe if you guys have any comments feel free to leave them in the video I'll respond as quick as I can and so will others if they're watching this video and reading the comments so thanks again like and subscribe I'll see you guys in the next video